that today. I'll get done quick. <laughs> so the need for workers. You know, when you work in the CIA, there's a lot of covert operations. Not everything is done out in the open. Not everything is put out there for everybody to see. But things are done in secret and behind the scenes. The CIA stands for Central Intelligence Agency. You know, that's the one that... Um, these are international spies, I guess you would say. But they have a mission statement, and it says this. It says, they're accountable to the president, Congress, and to the American public. The mission of the Directorate of Operations is to strengthen national security and foreign policy objectives through the clandestine collection of human, human intelligence and covert action. That's what the CIA, means, CIA is doing today. I know that I get asked all the time by people, are you in the CIA? Because of the places I go. You know, when I go to these crazy countries, you know, people are asking me, why do you go to these crazy countries? They said, are you in the CIA? I said, absolutely, I am. I am in the CIA, and that's why I go to them. Because our, their CIA is, has a different meaning than ours. Our CIA means Christ in action. You should have hit it right then, Ed. Yeah, there you go. Christ in action. There he is. He's standing at the door and he's knocking, amen. And he wants to come in. He wants to be with you, amen. So our CIA, well, the, um, the CIA has a director. His name's Mike P Pompeo, P-O-M-P-E-O, -E Pompeo, Mike Pompeo. That's the leader of our CIA right now. But there is also a director of our CIA, and his name is Jesus, amen. His name is Jesus Christ, and he is the director of Christ in action, amen. He is Lord over all. He is Christ in action. And that's how I feel when I go out around the world when I'm here, uh, that I'm to live and breathe Jesus, amen, and I'm to take what he's poured into me and be in action for Jesus. And our intelligence comes from where? It comes from the Word of God. Amen. That's where we gather our information. We study and learn so that we'll we can fulfill the direction that God is calling us. Amen. When Jesus walked the earth, he modeled what he wanted us to do. It, it's, it's not different for every person. It's not different for every person of what Jesus wants you to do. Okay, he modeled it, and you can't say, well, I'll do something different. No, we're all called to the same thing. We all have the same purpose. You're like, hmm, what's he, where's he going? So even though, you know, we're, we may be at different stages of our relationship with Jesus. I look at Al Jones, who has served the Lord for so long, you know, has been serving the Lord. I look at Shirley Dorsett, you know, is you know, was born a Christian, I think, you know, because her dad was such a great pastor, you know, and she's loved Jesus m most of her life, you know. And I just look around the room, and I see people that have been serving God for a long time. And, and I look at people that are new in the Lord, people that have just started coming to church. But we all have the same purpose. We, there's, we're not different, amen? We're, we are all with the same purpose in the kingdom of God. And the only difference is how you fulfill your purpose. I know we were out at the track yesterday, and we were at Fontana Motor Speedway, and it was a little warm, you know. Delana's got, you can check it out on Facebook. She's got this red race suit on, you know, and, and she's out there. She's got her sweats on underneath this red race suit, and she, we're standing up there in the sun, and she's holding her helmet and everything. And she's like, it's a little hot. I said, yes. She's like, she's like I'm going to go stand in the shade. You hold my place in line. I'm like, no problem. So she goes over into the shade. When she goes over to the shade, this lady asked her a question. Is this, is this on your bucket list? And Delanda began to share with her her bucket list. Delanda said, I guess my bucket list would be that I see somebody get up out of a wheelchair and begin to walk. And Delanda began to tell her the miracles that we've seen around the world and the things that God's seen. And this, this lady is just so enthralled with Delanda because Delanda's just sharing the kingdom of God with her. You know, it's the opportunity. God will bring you opportunities when you're in the CIA, amen? If you're looking for opportunities, if you say, well, nobody comes and talks to me. When was the last time you said, Jesus, use me? Because he will. He's looking for opportunity to share, and Delanda took it. And then Jeanette went and got her nails done, and the lady next to her had cancer, is that correct? And 
the lady stopped the lady doing her nails so that Jeanette could pray for her. And the lady says, I receive it today. I believe I'm healed. You know, and, and it's just being Christ in action, learning to be that everywhere we go. And just as in the CIA, there are many parts. You know, I looked at, do you know the CIA has, um, what do they call them? Mission houses. Ministry centers, mission centers around the world. Mission centers around the world. The CIA has them. You know what? The CIA has mission centers around the world. We have, we have one that in Africa, Pastor Alfred, when he went to the government on Tuesday, I told you last week, they wanted to shut him down. He went to the government. They said, you have to build a proper latrine. So I said, okay. I said, how much is it going to cost? He said, $100. I said, do you have it? And he said, no. So I sent him $100, and he built a proper latrine. I hope it's proper. Look, <laughs> looks a little crazy, but I hope it's proper. <laughs> that's, in, that's in the jungles of Africa in Uganda, you know, where Delanda and I and Jeanette and Bob and Yolanda are going in... Um, January 28th, we're heading over there to Africa to go minister for um, a bunch of days and uh, just visit our orphanage and, and minister to the orphans that we take care of. That's Christ in action. Amen. So when we look at our teacher Jesus, we see it in the spirit of what he did. I mean, because it said, what did it say? Well, I'm going to tell you what it said. It said, he healed every kind of disease and illness. Now let me ask you this, is there anybody here that's healed every kind of disease and illness? I've seen a lot of miracles, but I haven't healed every kind of disease and, and, and illness as I've been going. So maybe we don't start there. Because it, it's tough, you know, when you, when you come in and you say, Pastor Ron expects us to heal every kind of disease and illness, man. I'm never going to be able to do that. And so you just don't even try well, I would be in that position because I've never healed every kind of disease and everything else. I've seen a lot of miracles. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen dead limbs come back to life. I have literally, Delonda felt emphysema leave these ladies one day when we were praying for them. They couldn't breathe. I remember praying for one lady that had emphysema for 10 years. And when she woke up in that morning, she told me, she goes, I am totally healed. I can breathe. And I was like, wow, praise God. And you know what? All I did was laugh over her. I never said in the name of Jesus. I just laughed. I had such joy that night, Junior, as I prayed for the people. All I could do was laugh. God just, I was so tired, man. I was very exhausted. I had preached three days, eight hours a day. And that day, I had prayed for people for four hours straight by myself. And by the time I was done, they said, would you please go to another city and minister to a group of 10 people? When I got there, it wasn't 10 people, 40 to 50 people. And I was so tired. It was, it, I, I got to the pulpit at 9 o'clock at night, and I'd already ministered all day, traveled to this other city to go in. And I, I get there, and the Lord told me, just talk on the atonement for healing. And I did, and then he filled me with joy. He filled me with such joy. I just started laughing, and I would just touch people, and that joy would hit them, and God was healing them. He was breaking oppression off of them. And I was so excited, you know, as he was doing that. Because that's what he does, amen? He is Christ in action through us, amen? So, in the spirit that Jesus did it in is what we can do. Because we have that same spirit in us, amen? Amen? <laughs> the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me, amen? So, number one today, and I only got one point, is compassion. Jesus did it in compassion. What did he say? When he saw the crowds, he had compassion. And I believe today that if we would walk in the compassion of Jesus, that we'll too begin to see the miracles happen in our lives. If we walk in the path compassion. Jesus was very compassionate towards the lost people. The people he saw that were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, and it moved his heart towards them. He was drawn to them. I just remember reading... Last week about Matthew, the tax collector, Jesus saw him and he said, come and follow me. And Matthew left everything to follow Jesus. It's just amazing. He just felt that compassion from Jesus to go. And Jesus had compassion on them. He was merciful to them. And Jesus extended his mercy to the lost and to the hurting. 
You know, the word declares it's easy to love somebody that loves you. But where God is calling us is to love those that don't love us. He's calling us to extend mercy to those that don't care about us, to those that don't like us, to those that don't love us, to those that would even think bad thoughts about us. He wants us to extend mercy to them. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is his mercy. This is his compassion for us, that while we were, him knowing that we were going to do jacked up things, he said, I'm going to die for you anyways. And it, but it's his hope that we would surrender to him. His hope is that we just come. He died for us, and it's not based on how good we are. Amen? It's not based on how much we love him. His mercy is based on one thing, his love for us. That's what his mercy is based on, how much he loves you and me. Amen? It's not based on us. Mercy means this, compassionate or kindly forbearance shown towards an offender, an enemy, or any other person in one's power, compassion, pity, benevolence. That's what mercy is. And God, Jesus, when he walked the earth, he showed mercy to people. He had compassion for them, amen? So, but while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love towards us. So we were all sinners, and then Romans 5, 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more. Having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So the two verses depict who we were. We were sinners and we were enemies of the cross. But when we come to Jesus and we get saved, amen, now we're born again and now he has saved our lives. He has laid out the plan that we can be saved. We are saved when we come to Jesus. Even though we were sinners and we were enemies, his grace has come to us to touch our lives. Amen. John 3, 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, what the enemy tries to do is he tries to bring condemnation on. He tries to tell you you're not good enough, you'll never be good enough, that, that because of the things that you've done that you'll never be able to, to fulfill the plan that God has for your life. You know, that's what the enemy does. The enemy tries to bring those condemning thoughts. And, and it tries to get you to the point that you won't even try because you feel this condemnation and you feel this way. But that's not true because Jesus, everybody say Jesus did not come to condemn you. Amen? He did not come to put condemnation on you. He did not come to tell you how bad you were. Yeah, hallelujah. I like that, Pastor Rob. He didn't come to tell me how bad I am. He come to tell me how good I can be. So I just stopped listening to the enemy. I stopped listening to his voice. Oh, you don't have anything to say. You're not good enough, you know. Yep, I'm not good enough, but Jesus is, and he's in me. See, I'm, I'm, just, I'm bought into Jesus. That's it, I'm just bought into Jesus, Marvin. I'm not, I'm not buying into Ron King, I'm buying into Jesus, amen? So I trust Jesus. Got to watch my step there. <laughs> I trust Jesus, amen? So because I trust Jesus, I don't walk under condemnation. Somebody said to me, shame on you one day. I said, no, nope. because <laughs> I don't wear shame either. I don't walk in condemnation. I don't wear shame. I don't wear guilt. I don't, I don't feel guilty, amen. I don't walk under this condemnation of what I've done in the past. I'm forgiven for my past. And when you come to Jesus, you are forgiven of your past. You can start moving forward, amen. You just start going with Jesus because God did not send his son into the world. Everybody say, did not. Send his son into the world to condemn us, but to give us life. Amen. And that's what I want. I want to walk in life. Amen. I'm free from condemnation, and you are too. Can you receive it today? You are free from condemnation. You are free. And you see, and what all God is asking us to do in that freedom is to extend it to everybody. Because if Jesus didn't come to condemn you, if Jesus didn't come to judge you, how can we condemn and how can we judge? 
I'll tell you right now, the hardest thing you'll do is not judge. That's the hardest thing you'll, you'll do. You, you'll say, well, it's just an observation. You know, we make so many observations of judgment, it's ridiculous. Don't judge, amen? Don't condemn. James 2.13, it says, for judgment, everybody say judgment, is without mercy. Judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. With that said, mercy extended by us to people will be just like what Jesus did. He had that compassion. And out of his compassion, the miracles flow. Out of your compassion for people, miracles can flow. But if we walk in judgment, if we walk in condemnation, then you're not going to see things happening in your life. You're not going to see people getting healed. You're not going to see people getting victory in, your, in their lives. They're going to see, they're going to feel a weight from you when you give them the look like, really? Y'all know what the look is. My kids knew what the look was when they were kids. It's like, I'd look at them like, and they'd be like, <laughs> you know, we all know what the look is. And we, you know what? We all have a look. We need to walk, get rid of the look, amen. We need to wash our face, amen, and get rid of that look. I've heard people say, oh, you don't want to argue with me because, you know, I can, I'll put you. It's like, man, if you're that good at arguing, you got a problem. A big one. <laughs> There's no condemnation, amen. So we need to learn to extend mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Triumphs mean means to... It exalt itself, boast against, to glory, to rejoice against. So when we try, we're rejoicing against what the enemy's trying to do, amen? We're rejoicing in Jesus, and we're defeating what the enemy's trying to do. We're expressing mercy to people instead of judgment. Instead of going up and sell, telling somebody, hey, you're going to go to hell if you don't commit your life to Jesus, why don't you try a new approach? And this is what happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Jesus I experienced such love from God, such peace from God, that I couldn't help but give my life to Him. And it's been an incredible experience ever since. And I do know this. The Bible tells me that Jesus is no respecter of persons and that Jesus died for everybody. So out of that, Jesus loves you today. I want you to know Jesus loves you today. And if you commit your life to Jesus, you'll experience that love like never before. And you won't be, you're not condemned, but he wants to bring you life. John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus come to give you life and life more abundantly. Doesn't that go a lot better than, hey, you're going to go to hell if you don't commit your life to Jesus? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you be more attentive to hear? And that's what we want. We had like 20, 25 people commit to Jesus on Friday in the food ministry. It was so fun. It was so fun. Oh, huh, Priscilla, it was just, God was moving. It was a powerful time. Yeah. Because we're just taking people out of condemnation and helping them triumph into mercy. Amen? Mercy triumphs over judgment. So when, when you look, look at the adulterous woman that, Jesus, that they brought to Jesus to condemn her as a Jesus didn't jump right in to condemn her. In John, let's go through this. In John chapter 8, verse 3, it says, Then the scribes and Pharisees brought him a, a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, the, this woman is caught in adultery. In the very act. Now, verse 5, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Some people said he might have been writing their names that had been in adultery. Some, some think that Jesus could have been saying, why were you there to find her? And 
where is the man that she was committing adultery with? So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman was standing in the midst. When the woman had raised himself up, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't condemn her because Jesus didn't come to condemn. Now, catching people in adultery is, especially if it's your wife or your husband, that's pretty drastic pretty rough sin to have to deal with. But even Jesus didn't condemn it. He didn't condemn it. He did challenge her, though. He said, don't go back to your way of lifestyle. He said, go and sin no more. Don't go back to what you've been doing. Now you're a new person. Now you're not under this condemnation. And he wanted her to live. Mercy overtook the judgment of man. Can you put mercy on? Can you walk in mercy? I'm not saying go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. I'm saying, can you walk in mercy? Can you take off all judgment today and cast it down and be merciful to people? Can that flow through you? The law says you're guilty. But Jesus took the guilty and gave mercy so that she's no longer in condemnation. That's what Jesus has done for you. He took your guilty away and put mercy instead. Jesus declares that we're not guilty when we come to him. If we're going to be Jesus' hand extended on the earth, that is what we will do to stop making them feel guilty for the things that they've been doing, for their past wrongs, and we'll start bringing them to life in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll start bringing them to life. This is what we're to do. Teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news of the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. You know, you may not be ever be called to stand in front of a people on a pulpit and preach the gospel of the kingdom. We, we are all called to be merciful just as Christ has been merciful to us. We're all called not to condemn because Jesus doesn't condemn us. We're all called to forgive because Jesus forgives us. You know, you, you may not be healing every disease and illness that's out there, but you can extend mercy and compassion to people, to everyone. You can turn the judgment off, and you can turn the love on, because that's what God has done for us. In John, 1 John chapter 4, 8, he says, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. If you're out there in the world and people only see anger and hatred and frustration with you because of their sin, I got to tell you, a few years ago, when we were voting on Prop 8, and I seen Christians on the corner with signs screaming at the public at the top of their lungs about how to vote on property. I mean, I thought, ooh, they're scary. I'm not going to say I know them. Because <laughs> there was no love in it. No love in it. When did Jesus not walk in love? Never. And he's calling us to do the same thing, to walk in love. If we're going to be a part of the CIA, Christ in action, we can love. We can show mercy to everyone. If we know God, we can love. If we love, we can win the lost. If we win the lost, we can save a generation. And it just progressively gets better. Amen. Have you received the love of God? Have you received his mercy? He says in 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. 
But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. See, we're being made perfect in the love of God so that we're not controlled by fear anymore. We don't have to be afraid to show the love of God. We are free to share with people the love of God so that they may know him and have fellowship with him. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 24, it says this. It's not going to be up there. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Amen. His mercies are new every morning. You say, well, I've stumbled and fall. Pastor Rob talked about that last week. When you stumble, just stumble forward. Amen. Stumble towards the cross of Jesus and know this. His mercy is new every morning. We may make mistakes, but we have a, we have a loving God that is there to, to help us to, to move past it, to help us to move into mercy, because mercy triumphs over judgment. And maybe you've been walking and you feel judgment. You feel like people are judge, judging you because of your life and what you've been doing. But today I say be free in the name of Jesus. Then I say go and sin no more. Amen. Get the freedom you need in Jesus. Receive the love of God and let it flow in you and through you. We do not have to remain in bondage, but we can walk in the mercies of God. And I want to challenge you today to join the CIA, that you really become Christ in action, that truly you let the mercies of God flow through you and that you break off all judgment. There's so much going on around us. And let, let me tell you, there's a lot to judge. There's a lot that's going to be judged. But Jesus has not made us to be judge. He's not called us to judge. He's called us to be merciful. So I challenge you today to be merciful just as Jesus is merciful. And the mercy that he gives you every day, that every day you'd extend mercy that you would change your thinking of people and you'd begin to extend that mercy of God to them, and that they would experience the love of God like never before, and they would be drawn to Jesus. The lady that talked, Delonda talked to at the track yesterday, she says, I'm just attracted to people like you. And, and it's because of the mercy, the grace that she's pouring out. And she shared with that lady for a long time there, just a beautiful thing when you can do that. Share the mercies of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving today. You gave me the one word, God, compassion today, God, and the mercy of God. And Lord, we've all here today and we hear your word. Lord, and I pray that, Lord, that we would begin to move in the mercy of God. We'd move in that mercy, Lord, and be so full of compassion for the lost, God, that our heart would ache for them the way that your heart ached for them. You saw them as lost, like sheep going to the slaughter. God, we don't want them to be lost. We want them to be one. We want them to be found. Lord, I remember that song, Amazing Grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I've been found because of your compassion towards me because of the mercy you've extended to me, God. I've been found by you. Jesus, I pray today that our hearts, Lord, would not only be found by you, but you would move through us, that people would be found through us. And maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I need the mercy of God today. I need to just be set free of the judgment I've been under, the condemnation I've been under. And today I just want to receive his mercy. I just want to surrender my life to him today. If that's you today, just raise your hand and wave at me this morning. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. We're going to sing a song here.
And I, and I want to just invite you, everybody to stand, please. You say, today I'm joining the CIA. I'm going to be Christ in action on this earth. I'm going to pour out mercy on people. I want you to just come today. I want you to come and just be filled. And if you raised your hand a few minutes ago, just come this morning and just say, I'm joining the CIA. I'm not going to be the same any longer. I'm going to be receive his mercy today. I'm going to extend his mercy today. Hallelujah. Just come. If you say, I'm committing it all, and I'm going to, I'm in the CIA. Hallelujah. I'm going to be merciful. I'm breaking off all judgment today in the name of Jesus. Go on, Nydia. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. pray right now for just an impartation of your mercy that your mercy would just come and fill us today God that Lord that we'd be overwhelmed by your loving kindness and Lord that we would walk it out that today God that we would walk out in mercy we would extend mercy that Lord you would use us God to break judgment off of people today God that Lord we'd be so full of mercy God that it flows like a river a mighty rushing river out of us God that our words be words of life. Even as we talked about last week, you can put words in our mouth, God. That we flow in that, God. And we be merciful to people. Lord, I pray right now that you break judgment off of every person in this house. That we'd be free from judgment and condemnation, God. That, Lord, that you silence the voice of the enemy. And no longer would people feel condemnation. No longer, God, will we feel unworthy because you make us worthy, Jesus. And as we've committed our lives to you today, as we've surrendered to say, we will be in the CIA, we will be Christ in action, that, Lord, that you strengthen every person here today, Lord, to be that, to re that we would go and we would reveal Jesus. Let your mercy just fill us today, God. we'd be merciful just as you have been merciful to each one of us. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, and everybody shout it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I challenge you to go in the mercy of God. 
Just let that mercy flow through you and touch somebody today with it, amen? And when you get up, just remember that every day His mercy's new. Every day His mercy's new. You'll never run out of mercy. It's always there for you.